Are you thinking about buying a hybrid Toyota vehicle? Or are you thinking about buying a non-hybrid Toyota? But you're stuck in the middle because you're not sure if the maintenance cost and overall ownership cost is going to be higher on the hybrid Toyota versus the non-hybrid Toyota. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about that just ahead. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Toyota World YouTube channel. I'm here at Maple Toyota, and this is kind of like a part two of a video that I did over a year ago where we talked about um, comparing the overall maintenance cost on a hybrid Toyota versus a non-hybrid Toyota. We're going to go over that again and update that video a little bit with this one here. All right, so I'm going to put a link in the description of this video that'll link back to that other video I'm talking about regarding maintenance hybrid versus non-hybrid but before we go any further let's just talk about the facts that you all need to know when you're considering a hybrid toyota versus a non-hybrid toyota all right fact number one you will save money on fuel if you're questioning if the hybrid equivalent of that toyota vehicle you're looking at whether it's the corolla the rav4 the highlander if you're questioning the fact that you will or will not save fuel or cost of fuel during your ownership of that vehicle you will save fuel with the hybrid versus the non-hybrid uh, depending how you drive and where you're going and your style of uh, driving your driving habits will determine how much fuel and how much cost you'll save on fuel but you will save fuel with a hybrid fact number two do expect to pay more for a hybrid toyota versus a non-hybrid toyota so whether you're comparing the camrys or the rav4s the highlander the tundras the hybrid equivalent generally has a higher msrp around 10 percent or less uh, give or take when comparing to the non-hybrid so if you are looking for the hybrid option do expect to pay a little bit more fact number three do expect for the most part to wait a little bit longer for a hybrid Toyota to come in versus a non-hybrid Toyota. Now, this isn't always the case, but generally the demand is much higher on the hybrids right now. So it does in turn make for a longer wait time on the hybrid equivalents. So if wait time is one of the issues for you and you need a vehicle uh, sooner, then you may be kind of forced to go into the non-hybrid option for now, just for the sake of getting the vehicle a little bit faster but it's different when you're talking about specific models and trims. So uh, do do your homework and your research wisely, but the uh, hybrids generally are a little bit of a longer wait time when compared to the non-hybrids. You'll notice on the Toyota website and also at your dealer that the non-hybrid Toyota versus the hybrid Toyota actually share pretty much identical uh, scheduled maintenance summaries and schedules, I should say, uh, within each other. Uh, they all comprise of service number one, service number two, and service number three. And actually with the non-hybrid equivalent, for example, on a RAV4, with scheduled maintenance, for example, at 48,000 kilometers and let's say 96,000 kilometers, there's actually uh, more for the dealership and the service department to actually look at and touch and see and deal with when compared to the uh, non-hybrid equivalent. Um, you'll take a look, for example, there's tightening of the propeller shaft bolts. You'll have to do that where you don't have to do that on the hybrid equivalent. For example, on the hybrid, there is a uh, air filter that actually cools down the hybrid battery. You might have to replace that every once in a while if it's dirty enough. But for the most part, the maintenance uh, that's involved on the non-hybrid and the hybrid is, is pretty similar. Now, going back to the fact that you will save fuel on the hybrid, of course, versus the non-hybrid, that's a given. Uh, for the most part, a lot of the hybrid Toyotas, when compared to their non-hybrid equivalent, actually have a smaller gas tank. So that's right. You're going to be actually putting less fuel in the tank because it's generally, for the most part, a smaller gas tank and saving more fuel while driving. So the uh, overall savings is all over. It's fantastic. 
In a nutshell, generally there is less wear and tear on the hybrid Toyotas versus the non-hybrid Toyotas. But again, driving style and driving habits will change this. Uh, but for example, just think of it like your combustion gasoline engine gets a break every once in a while because it has another engine that's working, which is your hybrid, which is kind of taking some of the load off on the combustion engine. So in turn, this does help with wear and tear because it's not always working all the time so hard uh, on the hybrid vehicles. Another cool and fantastic fact is that our hybrids in charge themselves. So every time you take your foot off the acceleration and you begin braking, you're actually regeneratively charging that battery. It's called regenerative braking. Uh, the hybrid battery does charge every time you take your foot uh, off the gas and put it onto the brake. So you never really have to charge the battery unless you're going with something like a plug-in hybrid, for example, Prius Prime, RAV4 Prime. But when you're talking about the regular Camry, Highlander, RAV4 hybrids, they charge and maintain themselves. If you own and drive a Toyota hybrid vehicle and previously had driven the non-hybrid equivalent, you'll notice there's a lot more peppiness when it comes to acceleration. And that's generally because the hybrid equivalent has more torque or it also could be because uh, the fact that the hybrid powertrain system does deliver 100% of the torque right away due to the way that it's set up with the electric motor. When you hit the gas, you're going. Now, granted, hybrid Toyotas might not be for everyone. I've scrounged up some reasons why you may not want a hybrid Toyota or why you may not, may not be able to go with a hybrid option for the Toyota. And one is, let's say, due to wait time. Um, if you have a time constraint and you know that you can get the non-hybrid option much faster than the hybrid option, well then you'll go with the non-hybrid option. Uh, reason number two, if there is a color or a package that you're after that's not offered in the hybrid option, for example, if you're looking at a RAV4 trail model, those don't come in hybrid, you'll have to go non-hybrid. Uh, option and reason number three, let's say, why you may not want or wouldn't want a hybrid Toyota is if you live in the North Pole. <laughs> so what I mean by that is in very cold temperatures, the hybrid systems don't work their best in terms of fuel savings. Uh, and that's because of a chemical reaction that takes place in the actual hybrid powertrain system. It takes a little bit longer for that reaction to take place and to get that hybrid system up and going and working in the very cold temperatures. So you'll notice like for example, in Canada, in the winter months, your fuel consumption uh, will be a little bit worse in the winter months than it is in the warmer months. And that's just because you're using and yielding a little bit more to the combustion engine, as opposed to the way it normally works, which is going back and forth between hybrid and the combustion on the you know regular, not so cold temperatures. So like I mentioned, hybrid's not for everyone. Gas combustion only is not for everyone. Uh, you'll have to pick and decide. Hopefully this video, video has helped you uh, to see which is best for you. I strongly believe hybrid is the perfect fit for most of the general public. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.